your town, your voice, your vote. Vote Tuesday, November 7th, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. We are your municipal candidates. For more information, visit myvote.ct.gov. I'm Bruce Conroy, running for town council. I'm Jeff Neckio, running for a seat on the town council. And, and we, we want, want you to vote for what's best for Wallingford. November 7th. Remember to vote. Just a little note on this early voting. Uh, it was a bipartisan vote. Yep. 27 to 7 in the Senate in favor. Mm -hmm. 107 to 35 in the House. So overwhelmingly mm -hmm. yeah. popular yeah. Uh, bipartisan. I hope that uh, that this election is not a barometer for elections to come, um, based upon you know some of the things that you and I talked about. And I hope that at some point soon, uh, whether before or after November seventh, that we can re-emphasize the importance of civility um, in our elections. We all live in this town, um, and at, at the end of the experience, we are all neighbors in some way, shape, or form. I really hope that after this election is over, if not by the time it happens, that we can figure out how to restore civility, those involved in politics in this town. Mayor Cervoni, let's make that the last word. Good luck on the uh, campaign trail. Hope to see you back in some way, shape, or form in some capacity. And thanks to WPAA-TV. Uh, questions about infrastructure. Structure that needs to be addressed in terms of repairs at town buildings, um, streets like North Main Street, um, plan for community pool, and how you're going to bring town halls technology to date. So I realize there's a lot in there, but it's important, so we're going to talk about it. So yeah, so infrastructure in general across the town I think it's become more apparent perhaps than it's ever been before now that we've had a really dedicated and great group of volunteers in the building maintenance committee, um, which basically functions as, as folks who are tasked um, to the best of their ability to analyze and report on what the infrastructure concerns of our town currently are. So I know they've been to many buildings um, and parks across town. And the reality is, as someone who's you know, traveled across the state of Connecticut in the past years as part of, a part of my job, um, can tell you that our infrastructure does fall well below not just other towns, but where we as Wallingford should be, most importantly. Our sidewalks are in terrible shape. Um, our roads could be certainly better. Our town buildings are in terrible shape. Pool has been, well, I, I can barely call it a pool at this point. I mean, it's been out of service for several years, and it's anyone who's driven by it knows that it's in a dire state. Um, but that is something that should have been done in a perfect world years ago. We waited because some folks in elected leadership in town thought that prices would go down, which is, I've yet to been shown in history in the United States when that's ever happened, so now we're paying those consequences. Um, but the pool can be done. It'll be done with a combination of hopefully grant money, it'll be bonded, um, and it might have to be adjusted slightly in terms of the original plan just because we've waited and costs might have gone up. But I'm certainly committed um, and have no doubt that we can open that pool in the summer of 2025. In terms of technology in town hall, that's going to take a bit longer, potentially. I mean, certainly aspects of that will be very quick, very immediate. In the first 100 days, we intend to at least offer the capabilities of direct deposit for town employees. The contract negotiations might take a little longer, but we'll have the capabilities and then online bill pay. Obviously, I will have a computer as mayor, uh, which we, the current mayor has not had a computer that he's worked with. Um, email for town employees. I mean, these are a lot of, a lot of basic things that we can do pretty early on, um, very low, relatively low cost. In terms of getting all of Town Hall up to date, that means digitizing our land records, digitizing all of our records, um, getting each individual department with the 21st century technology that they need to do the jobs of the 21st century, that's gonna take years. Um, and that's why we have, our campaign has proposed a 15 year or capital expenditure plan to repair the infrastructure needs that we currently have while also leave room and leave a plan for these much needed uh, improvements and upgrades. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take a lot of grant money, it's gonna take a lot of bonding, it's gonna take a lot of 
forward thinking. Funny, I actually really campaigned on civic education and civic engagement, which I feel is missing. No entity has ever been responsible for it, and it's slipping through the cracks to our yeah. detriment, I believe. So can we follow up on that a little sure, bit? What sure. What would be your specific suggestions on <laughs> how to get this going? Most people go to curriculum in the schools. I have no control over that, although I do speak with a commissioner of education about this. We have no funding for our office or any other office for public education around civics. Simple things like how do you file an absentee ballot? Who's eligible? How do you find your polling place? When election day is, when special elections are, we have no way to get that information out to the public. And then if you think about um, more specific information, like how do you contact your legislator? Yeah. How do you testify? What's a public hearing? What are, what are the details around early voting? There's no budget for that. And I think it's a mistake to allow political candidates and political campaigns to be the only people out there talking about how our civic structure works. And I think some of the misinformation, some of the problems we've seen in some towns in the state, etc. I think all of that stems from just a lack of civic knowledge.